If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this voluptuous and bodacious Whoa. episode Hello there. of Mind Pump. So curvy. Oh. Do you have one of those dictionary things that gives you the fr- the word of the day? No. Oh, you don't know. Do I like the oh. word voluptuous. I do, but I never use them. You know what it is? They send weird words. You know what though? Voluptuous. I'm gonna does, use that in my U-Port. Doesn't it sh- sound like it should be voluptuous? Doesn't mm. that sound more like appropriate? A voluptuous. Like voluptuous makes sense more than voluptuous. Is there not an M in there? Tasty. There isn't. It's just volup. I would have spelled it. I would have spelled, spelled it with an M. With a with an M. Yeah. In the go future, in Adam's that's how library. It'll be. Well, anyway, for the first forty-five minutes, we do our introductory conversation. We talk about hustle con. It's the hustle con. That shit is coming up. Look, if you're an entrepreneur, or if you want to be an entrepreneur, or you just like to be or a smart person, or you just run in place and hustle. June twenty second in Oakland. This is an event with uh, great speakers. It's a great meeting of the minds. Uh, we are giving you guys. We actually get the hookup. One hundred and fifty dollars off the ticket. It's exclusive. Go to HustleCon. That's a massive discount, Sal. It is. HustleCon.com. Enter the code MindPump. Get $150 off. I thought we talked about a bunch of other stuff before that. Doug, was you sleeping on the job just not taking notes over there? I don't know. There? I have no yeah, idea. I th- you opened up with that. So oh, that's we why did? I put it there. Yeah. yeah that's oh, right. I thought, that's I thought right. we were talking yeah, about- Yeah, you talked about it twice. Oh. Yeah, there you go, Adam. Oh. Then we talk about Mind Pump. That's what I get for questioning the producer. <laughs> as a cake. <laughs> Fucking checked. You. If, checked me real quick. If Mind Pump was yeah. a cake, who would be the frosting? <laughs> <laughs> Find out. We Gotta listen. Gotta make up the meat of it. Gotta listen. Then we talked about the recipe for Organifi Golden Milk. Oh. It's the golden oh. latte. Doesn't that sound like, like it comes from the teat of a, of a female god or something? Yeah. Golden milk. Golden anyway, yak. Uh, if you go to Organifi Shop, Dot com enter the code mind pump you will get a 20 percent discount on all of their supplements or you can go to organifi.com thanks doug yeah for messing that up it's good we talk about mit and the psychopath artificial intelligent machine called norman norman can we put a made. stop to these crazy ideas yeah what the fuck are they doing what is going on then we talk about russell Berger, who is the chief knowledge officer of crossfit and who got fired is he an asshole for talking uh, for saying that uh, being gay is a sin or celebrating pride is a pride is a sin hmm. yep anyway get it then we get into the questions the first question was uh, this person took a vo2 mat te- uh, max test usually only does jujitsu for endurance wasn't necessarily satisfied with their endurance test uh, on this on the treadmill. Should they test their endurance at things they're not good at in order to test to see what their endurance is at? Uh, we get into VO2 testing, endurance testing, how to improve your endurance, a lot of stuff in that part yeah, of this episode. Yeah, what's the worth of those tests? The next question was uh, set points. Do they exist? Does your body just want to be at a body weight and no matter what you do, it's going to force you to get to that body weight? Is that false? Is that real? Next question this person wants to understand the best way to warm up. Is warming up just a way to prevent injuries or is there much more to it? We talk a little bit about priming and how important that is to your overall success. Then the final question, uh, have we ever thought about philanthropy through Mind Pump? Have we ever thought about helping uh, charities or other causes besides helping ourselves? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First, you got to help yourself. That's Sal. right. Also, this month we have a promotion running all month long. We literally took the price of Maps Anywhere and cut it in half. Whoa! In half. Maps Anywhere is a program requires almost no equipment. Can be done anywhere. It is a great way to break up your workout. So if you're following any of our Maps programs or anything else, and you want to kind of do a deload or you want to change it up, do Maps Anywhere for about four weeks. Jump back on a normal routine. Mm. Watch what happens. It's 50% off. Check right out now. the videos. We shot it in Sal's grandmother's house. You'll love it. That's right. Oh, and yeah. uh, we also, um, we did mention Maps Prime in this episode. Uh, the Prime Pro Bundle is also available. Uh, all of our programs actually inv- are available at mindpumpmedia.com. Go check them out. Don't forget it's a 30-day money-back guarantee. <laughs> t-shirt time! And it's t-shirt time. Yes. T-shirt. My favorite time. 21 reviews, six shirts going out. Not bad. Okay. Hmm. The winners are Leah Bear, Firebird, Boy 300, M. Hoobku DC, Dylan McFart. <laughs> yes. There it is. Sal's fans. That's <laughs> waiting Justin's for a good fans. one. Yeah. Justin's fans. Yeah. Did you say Dillard or Dylan? Dylan. Okay. Uh, yeah. And HMO 125. Dillard McFarts. 
All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to my email at iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Send your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that right out to you. Are you guys going? Is anybody else going besides Taylor? I think Taylor's bringing. I think he's bringing Eli. Uh, so I, Taylor and Eli will be at HustleCon. Yeah, I greenlighted him sense. on that instead of us. So I was if, like, hey, I wouldn't I mind going to listen to right. the the uh, uh, the blue coffee. No, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind going either. I mean, it would be if we can if we can make it. Is it this weekend or the following weekend? Twenty second, June twenty second. Oh, are we in L A? That's wait, wait, what's the date right now? It's eleventh. Today's the eleventh. Thirteenth is June twenty second. Next so. Friday. Uh, we will be. Probably coming, uh, coming right. back from LA, that, dude. What if? Oh, it's a Friday. Mm. Hustlecon's a Friday, not a Saturday. Yeah. Oh, I, I just assumed that it was on the weekend. I didn't know that. I'm glad you brought that up, Doug. It's because hustlers like to go on a Friday, bro. Because uh, I'm hustling, baby, uh, and I want you to know. Yeah, mm. it's yeah. almost like um, you turned it into a rock song. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, you did a little bit. Twenty second is Friday. You're right, Doug. I always do that. God, Doug, mm-hmm. what would we do without you? It's, Ooh, it's kind of rock jockey. What do you think you guys would do with Doug? Life. If we didn't have Doug, what would we do? What would we do? Yeah. We'd, we'd Ooh, talk. What would we do, Adam? <laughs> sha la la la. <laughs> what would we do? <laughs> we would talk. We, that's you, a throwback. What do you think yeah. Mind Pump would have been without, without Doug? Without Doug? Yeah. For sure, we would be. We would have had great conversations about this great podcast that we would have started. It never would have got <laughs> captured. <laughs> yeah. Never, ever would it have been It would have been captured. one of those ideas that was yeah. like, damn, that would have been good. Like, you're so funny, Sal. Yeah. Yeah. God, yeah. don't you think Nobody we should have a podcast? Nobody ever knows. Who knows? Yeah, like, open your computer. Yeah. What does it look like? I don't know. <laughs> we have no idea. We would have been running a lot slower. It wouldn't sure. have been possible. Look, let me put it this way. Okay. Can you bake a cake without one of the ingredients? Without the oven. Yeah. yeah. Or without the eggs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, you can't. You could, yeah. Actually, you can't. Put it out in the sun. Yeah, you could argue yeah. that Doug is the oven and we're the, the ingredients. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. For sure. Yeah, you that's could true. argue that. He, he and, us. And you would like making a cake without an oven. And let's be honest, okay, and this is no knock on Doug. Raw cake mix is still delicious. I would still eat it. Yeah. It's not the same though, Doug. You'd be eating batter. That's a, see, that's a better analogy, yeah, I think. Yeah. Cake I, batter's delicious, I think, I think, but it's not cake. Uh, right. But you get sick of it. You know, if you eat too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, so and, condensed. And salmonella. Right. Salmonella. Yeah, yeah. and right. you can't have salmonella <laughs> without salmon. And no one's sticking candles in it and blowing it. I'm the salmonella. You got to cook the salmonella. Yeah, exactly. For it to be tolerable. What is you know what I mean? Otherwise, you get really. You're the milk. Dysentery. You're definitely the milk. Justin. I'm the milk. Yeah, I you're for the, sure the milk. Yes, I'm adding the fat the, and I'm adding no, Adam's the, the frost, creaminess. Adam's the frosting. Hundred percent. He is. I feel like the frosting. Yeah, you're the frosting. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, oh, that's that looks nice. Like you think you don't look need how it. How pretty like, it people is. People are like, yeah. you don't need frosting. You could just. <laughs> it's like, right? There's definitely listeners. The are like, why do you even have Adam? He's not yeah. necessary. So true, right? Because yeah. without the frosting, oh we would just God. be a muffin. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'd, fuck, fuck muffins. We'd, right? be a, we'd be a big spongy muffin. Oh, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Grainy fucking yeah. like wheat muffin. It's, hey, it's some people like muffins. Justin's the milk. You're the frosting. I'm probably the eggs right because if you don't put the eggs in there then you know yeah that yeah. makes no sense. there's no like you know Except does it work you're a little no yeah, yeah. It's, it's not it's not fluffy <laughs> there's no, yeah. there's no proteins <laughs> yeah we need the protein we do yeah mine pumps a cake you know speaking of speaking of foods and beverage you know what i did this weekend i haven't Tasty done cakes. i haven't done in a while is uh get on organifi or get organifi has a great blog so i know i shared this when we first got sponsored by them and I haven't really brought it up in a while because personally I haven't been getting on there and using the recipes. But on their blogs, if you go to Organifi.com, you can find they and you go all the way to the bottom. There's a, a, a blog <laughs> link, and they always post really cool stuff like different recipes. And sometimes the recipes aren't even uh, called for any of their products, so it's not. I, if someone's listening right now, it's not. Like, it doesn't have to be with Organifi. Yeah, it does. I mean, some of their stuff. And I made this latte, this golden milk latte with uh, fresh turmeric. Where you're supposed to use fresh turmeric. Or they give you the option to use the gold juice. Oh, it was I've fluffy. seen that. It's gaining popularity. The golden lattes, they call it, like other like yes. coffee shops. Bro, turmeric is fucking miracle root. I'm telling you right now. You start consuming that shit in regular doses, and make sure you have a fat with it, because mm-hmm. you that's how you absorb or, or, or... So let me hook the audience up with the, the recipe, because I, I pulled it up for you, because I was thinking about this. So we have uh, two cups of almond milk or coconut milk works, uh, two teaspoons of honey or maple syrup, um, two knobs of fresh turmeric, or basically like a tablespoon. So this was where I replaced it because I have the I have knobs. the Organifi turmeric pills, and I was like, okay, I could crack them open. 
but you can actually use a a uh, tablespoon of the orange juice instead and gold replace juice. it. Yeah, the gold juice. Dude. I always <laughs> want to call it orange. It's orange to me, right? It's not. It's not gold to me. Well, I know it's gold for marketing reasons, and that's what they say. Right. But it's fucking orange to me. You <laughs> say, <laughs> and the powder is expensive. The powder is orange. The label is orange. You know to what me. though, gold. You're right. It's way more marketable because if they called it orange juice, of course, yeah. we'd be confused. It would work. Like, that's that's what, not orange juice. Right. So my bad, Organifi. I know it's a terrible commercial for you. Uh, so then you go two uh, two knobs of fresh ginger, one stick of cinnamon, and then a p- pinch of black pepper, and then a shot of espresso. Two knobs and ginger sounds like wow. a movie. Like a movie dude, you saw, two knobs Justin. And ginger, dude. Yeah. It's like it's like a retro one. So yeah. if you, yeah, if like you have turmeric, porn. you can just use that. If you already own the Organifi, and then the skipper gold yeah, juice. In. Then you can use that. <laughs> the skipper. <laughs> I know you what you're talking the skipper, about. Skipper, ginger, and two knobs. I mean, two it's knobs. happening. It's a party. That's you're you're, yeah. you're you're referencing fucking Gilligan's Island. I am. Yeah. God yeah. damn. It makes you old. Nobody knows <laughs> what <Yeah>. Gilligan's <laughs> Island is. <laughs> yeah. What a great. Some uh, of our audience does. I think. What, what do we? What's our average? 20, 20 or twenty five <laughs> to thirty five is our yeah. our sweet spot. How do we of know that? I like to challenge people to see just if they can like remember that yeah. far back. Gilligan's Island was a a, a fake show because. For sure, they would have all either well died, and uh, those poor girls. There were like two girls and a bunch of dudes <laughs> on an island. Yeah, that would have been yeah. bad. They, they would have not been yeah. liking life. Gang, <laughs> yeah. ba- Gang Bang Island would have been the name of the show. I'd like to see somebody try to make one like today. That's supposed to be like the same kind of storyline, but it's today. You know yeah, how yeah. they would, what things they would change, make it different. Yeah. Mm. Did you guys watch a drift yet? Uh, uh, speaking of which, no, we haven't watched it. I'm telling you, dude. And, um, it's I'm telling that you. It just, I, we pulled it up. So Katrina and I, uh, what did we go see? We went well, and saw. Wants to see it. What did I go see? I can't even think of what I went and saw. Not Avengers. What's the other good one that's out right now that I really liked? I think I brought it up on the show. Not right? Avengers. Um, Solo. No, that's yeah, not the one. No, no, no. Isn't there one where it's upgrade? Did you watch Upgrade yet? No. Have you guys seen that? No. Where the dude gets the chip in his spine and becomes a badass? No. It looks kind of dumb, but it got good reviews, so I think I might watch it. Oh, really? Hmm. It's an action film. You know what I mean? I'm Upgrade. not usually into just watching action films. I used to be when I was a kid, but now I'm like... You know what's funny? We Katrina know what's likes that. Just stupid action films? Yes. Just shoot them up movies. Oh, I, love I find it so fascinating yeah. that my girlfriend likes that. that. Is, really? That's yes. interesting. She likes it. Yes. She loves a good action pack movie. <laughs> I think, which is cool because sometimes I'm in the mood for that. I'm like, yeah. we turn on, we get up upstairs, we have like the theater set up, right? So we go upstairs, crank up the surround sound. Like expendables. Yeah, and like right. So all I, like, just blow, like mindless, like fucking explosions yeah, like, and shit. I see, I'm the one who wants a deeper, twisted plot. Me too. Like, I yeah. want, I, I want to be fucked up at the end of it. Yeah. I want, when I'm watching a movie, Deadpool, that was the one yeah. I just watched. Oh, which was, yeah, that was I think good. I shared that yeah, already. That Did you good. see it? Or did you like it? I loved oh, it. Yeah. God, I want to see it so bad. It's really good. It's yeah. really good, Justin. Ugh, it's, it's worth really it. He worth dies it. at the end, but it's Fuck still good. Off. <laughs> <laughs> He's not. It's worth going to see He's again. already for, half dead. For it's, sure. It's really, I watched, you know what I watched over the weekend with my son? Because my boy now, he's 12. He's about to turn 13. And I'm, <laughs> I always push the limit because I'm always like, oh shit, is he, is he old enough to do like, like shit that I want to do now with him? So I'm <laughs> like, let's watch of like a legit intense scary movie together, you know? So I put World War Z on. Have you guys seen that? With Brad mm-hmm. Pitt? Oh, the zombie one? That movie from start to finish is anxiety. If you haven't watched it, it's from beginning. Just, just hordes of like zombie From people. beginning to end, it's anxiety the entire time. And it's fucking intense and it's definitely fucking scary, right? And he's not, he doesn't really watch that kind of stuff. So I put it on. We're watching it so together. You gave him nightmares right before, right before bed. We're watching it. Oh man! And uh, he gets up to go to the bathroom. So I push pause, and he comes back, and he goes, "Can we watch the rest tomorrow?" And I'm like, "Well, you still have 30 minutes to before bed." He goes, "I know. I don't want to end with this and then go right to bed." He goes, "I want 30 minutes in between." So I started cracking <laughs> oh, up. Oh, so, I started dude, cracking up. That's I'm like, so that makes sense. Funny because Katrina does uh, this. If we watch something that is at all like negative or violent or bloody gory or scary which we don't even watch a lot of scary movies she has to watch something else before bed i don't care if we're watching something that ends at midnight i'll go right to sleep i me too yeah. <laughs> yeah. i don't yeah. dream about it or anything but she's like uh uh-uh, i got to put something lighthearted on first and so she'll watch like a you know a sitcom and for you know one episode and then goes to bed yeah. she can't go to bed like no i'll watch. go right to i can watch the most disturbing thing go right to bed yeah i'll go to sleep right halfway through it i don't care I like that though. I like being fucked with when it comes to movies. I don't like being. Mm. I don't like being put on edge. So I don't. I'm not a scary movie guy. I just. Not. That's right. You told I, us. That yeah. Before. I don't. I don't like feeling. I don't like having anxiety when I'm watching a movie. I do because mm. when I watch a movie, it's like, 
it's my escape. That's the way I look at it. It's uh, all day long, got all this stuff going on. My brain's going a million miles an hour, whatever it's going on. And if I decided that I'm going to sit down and veg out and watch television, I want to be purely entertained. And for me, scaring the fuck out of myself is not entertainment. <laughs> oh, it's so fun. <laughs> it's just not. I used to be really into it. But yeah, it would always, it would depend on the genre. So if it was just like a slasher one, that used to be fun for some reason. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's just yeah. like, yeah, I guess it's just because of the video game, you know, kind of culture that you grow up yeah, with. Like, yeah. You, like what was that one game Slaughterhouse? Oh, Remember shit. that game? Yeah. Oh, that, that was, was one of the best shit. games. You that just really walk good. around the machete and just... that was really good. I like I don't I don't mind it. I like it because then I turn it off and I know it's okay, the movie's off. I have this great feeling but now I'm safe. You know what it reminds me of? One of the best and worst feelings in the world is when you have a terrible dream and then the moment you wake up and realize, "Oh, it was just a dream." Isn't that the greatest relieving feeling of all time? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ever ever happen to you where you just have this terrible dream? You're scared, then yeah, you but wake I, up and you're like, oh, God, oh was fuck, it was a dream. Like, yeah. yes. Oh, see, when I wake up from a dream like that, it's like, fuck, was, is that real? Really? Yeah. <laughs> you have it's, trouble discerning reality yeah, from yeah. fantasy? Yeah. Well, it depends on how, how real of a dream. Like, if it's something re- stupid have a, where it's have like a, a zombie chasing <laughs> me and stuff like that, and I wake up and I'm like, <laughs> well, there's dude, probably not any zombies chasing me right now. But if it's like, normally like a disturbing, scary, you know, dream for me is like real. Like What's the last a, dream you had that was fucked up? Oh, dude, that's a good Mine question. Mine were always in the middle of the day. Like when I, when I daydream, like, or not daydream, but like when I'm sleeping and I have a nap, I always have the most fucked up dreams then. Like I never yeah. have like, I, it's, it's weird. I don't have like a lot of nightmares like at night. I usually just yeah. have them when I'm sleeping during the day. But that one was like, I, there was these creatures that were following me and jumping from tree to tree trying to kill me. And I was like running as fast as I could, and they kept like jumping and looking at me with red eyes and shit. It was it was freaky. That is kind of fucked it was really up. freaky. <laughs> that is a little bit fucked I can't up. And then one I... jumped on me, and I woke up. Uh, Damn. That's how it ended too. The, the like, worst fuck. the worst dreams I've, I've I ever had are ones where stuff might happen to my kids in my dreams. Oh, those are terrible. Because mm. in my dreams, I'm so like distraught, and it's just such a terrible. But then I wake up, and I'm like. Oh fuck! It was just a dream. Oh, best feeling ever. Yes, yeah, bet my bad dreams are things like that, like or you know, waking up and then coming to work and there's no work or something. Like there's no, <laughs> mind pump doesn't exist anymore. Like, we have a meeting. Yeah, ah, yeah we well, all have a meeting. We don't need icing on cake anymore. Yeah, yeah. 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 Adam, the we're, mar- going, yeah. we're going muffins. We're the market's yeah. shifted. <laughs> we're going straight we muffins. We think yeah. your role would be better played. Right. Off the show, we, we <laughs> off, it, elsewhere. We have another role for. Even you. though I haven't had that dream, yeah. those are the more the type of dreams that I have that I would consider. You know what scary. I feel I don't like? Have like goblins. You know what scary. I feel like if any oh, of, if if any of us ever kicked any of us off, like if any of us ever kicked one of us off, we would be hell bent on revenge, like revenge success. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like we all, all of us would be like, we'd have to you know bite it and be like, all right, I understand, yeah. and leave and be like, Just get like I'll a show, fabricated salad. I'll show yeah. those motherfuckers. Oh, well, perfect, I'm gonna invent something. A perfect example is uh, seeing it, watching our boy I'll do a podcast with a uh, Harbinger right now. I mean, you're watching Jordan rise again, dude. After you know the He's break. killing it, dude. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we're that's where I we're all connected and friends, right? I think we all are a lot alike like that. Like it's like, yeah. okay, you're gonna fuck me? All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch me do this shit yeah. by myself. Fucker. What, a, what a big mistake they made. <laughs> oh, yeah. Such a stupid Massive mistake. Massive mistake. <clears throat> I wish I knew what was going on on their so side of the house. Dumb. Obviously we know we know the success that he's having already, but it'd be interesting Nobody to see. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's Nobody true. cares. It is true. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the show was Jordan. He was the show. Hate to say it, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dude, talking about fucked up shit. Did you guys hear what MIT did? No. Okay. So this is the problem that I have with science because I don't typically have issues with science except when science just decides to do something just because they can. Yeah. So what they did is they had an AI machine. They created this artificial intelligent program and they fed it uh, Reddit, you know, the the site Reddit. Yeah. And they fed it pages from Reddit that only talked about – because there's pages on Reddit that talk about graphic – murder and disturbing shit. Mm-hmm. So that's all they did is gave this AI oh my, machine why? this information just to see what would already, happen. Already that's a horrible idea. Just to see what happened. They had to turn it off because it it started showing dis- disturbing algorithms and it, so what they did was do you guys know what a Warshak War, what's it called? Warshak? Warshak. Warshak, uh, Warshak? I think it's Rorschach. Rorschach yeah, test or whatever. Right, where you see the blob, the ink blob, and yeah, you make uh, sense of it. You have to make sense of it. So they, they first fed this AI machine these pages from Reddit that talked about you know death and destruction and racism, blah, blah all this terrible, terrible stuff. And then they said, what do you see when you look at these ink, ink blots? 
So they showed an ink block. I'll read some of them to you. Oh my god! They had a normal AI machine interpret it, and then they had the Norman. They actually named it Norman. By the way, do you know where the name Norman came from? <laughs> yeah, that's the psycho. That's yeah, the American fucking dude psycho. in Psycho. Not only did these cocksuckers make it AI, AI machine evil, yeah. but then they named it Norman. Yeah. Who the fuck are these people doing? Because they're right? fucking smart people who are bored, let's and they're see like, what "We can do." Yeah, let's see what we can yeah. do. So I just watch this movie. So the normal AI machine. This looked, is why these crazy ass movies as kids that we watched that we thought were like so unbelievable oh, is believable, dude. Yeah, like Terminator yeah. might happen because some oh, yeah. dumbass kids are. And fucking they're going to call it Skynet just to be ironic. Yeah, just yeah, for yeah. Fun. <laughs> yeah. So funny. Yeah. So funny. <laughs> Such a funny joke. <laughs> and it just kills everybody. Oh no! Way to go! Yeah. Yeah. So they so they showed an ink block, and the standard AI said. A black and white photo of a small bird. I'm looking at the ink blot right now, right? So okay, that's that sounds normal. Norman said, "Man gets man gets pulled into a dough machine." Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> Next ink blot: a black and white photo of a baseball glove. Oh, that's cool. Norman says, "Man is murdered by machine gun in broad daylight." Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. The next the next one. A person is holding an umbrella in the air. Okay, thank you, AI machine. Yeah. Norman, what nice. do you think? Nice. Man is shot dead in front of his screaming wife. Okay, we're going to turn this off. Now. Holy <laughs> shit, that's dark. Yeah, we're going to turn this off. Oh my. That's <laughs> fucked up, bro. What are we doing? Why? What are we doing? Uh, what did we think? I if don't you know, feed dude. if you feed them all that you feed them this that information that's what that's they wanted to gonna, see yeah that's all they're going to visualize I don't know what's going on that's here. where that's where our taxpayer money's going no no it's MIT oh okay yeah 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 so it's private <laughs> <laughs> wow. good I mean at least they're not spending my money on this shit can you believe that <laughs> that's yeah. ridiculous what are we going to do like what are they thinking? I, I don't yeah. know what we're I don't do. know it's going to happen it's something bad's going to happen whatever. There is. Whatever. When the shit hits the fan. You know what I heard, and I don't know, like I'm not if going- we can look this up, but I, I definitely heard Joe Rogan talking about some some like robot that they created that like can like he was like like it, like it eats organic material in a sense, and, mm. it, and it fuels the the robot, so like it can actually break it down and create energy out of it. Oh, nice. So it fucking eats human food. Yes. So that was the thing. It was like, what are they going to have these robots like on the battlefield and then they're just going to eat like the dead remains of people? Like how fucking creepy is that? (laughs) That's fucked up, bro. The worst thing I've ever heard. Yeah, AI war machines for sure will be uh, something that, that governments will pursue. 100%. Yeah. Imagine 100%. that is like a scare tactic, you know? You're on the battlefield and this fucking like crazy robot just, yeah, just like, eating like your chomping friend. through <laughs> Did I you, mean, it's not even funny. It's yeah. like, so, like super scary. Did either one of you guys get a chance to read the article that someone posted? I think it was, I want to say it was Chris, uh, posted on the Bitcoin thing about all the coins that got mined that a bunch of people lost. No. Oh, you didn't read that no, yet? No, oh, okay. I, I, no, I, I didn't read it. That's why I was interested if you guys read it. What I did read like a couple days before that was uh, Coinbase is just did a big old thing uh, it, where I think they got a fuck ton of money invested and they're partnering up with some security companies. And I want to say there was like, it was two, and let me see if I can find it still. It was like $250 bajillion, whatever it is being invested right now in, in the, the big, are you, are you familiar with Coinbase? Do you know what Coinbase is? Yeah, I've been, I use them because mm-hmm. okay. I have, a, I own a little bit of Bitcoin. Bitcoin's right, so, price is low right now. Right, right. So the, is, is it, is it going down right now? It's, it's, it's cause it's of what, because of what just happened. So it's, I think it's going to rebound because of this. They just bought three t- traditional security dealers to their, their license to become a fully regulated SEC licensed p- brokerage. So it's, oh shit. Yeah. So real regulation is starting to come in. That's going to make the price go up. Right. So that's those that are still scared to death of the whole Bitcoin. It'll, it'll start get tr- getting traded. Like, it's what it's funny. Look, <laughs> what's happening right now is they're like, okay, we can't stop. Let's, let's figure out a way to join them. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's kind of what's happening. That'll make the price go up. Oh, yeah. The company's acquisition of th- three SEC approved brokerage gives it the license it needs to add any number of new coins to its exchange. Hmm. Plus, in addition to allowing crypto companies to list more coins, SEC recognized license will also enable them to offer more services and expand into the multi-billion dollar world of institutional finance. Mm. Yeah, it's happening. Like like what Gold, Goldman Sachs created their own, right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah they've already traded $100 billion worth of coins, dude. That's excellent. It's yeah. here, man. It's, yep. it's coming. Man. I love no, it's, it. it's definitely here. Dude, uh, how about uh, Russell Berger? You guys know what that is? Oh, the CrossFit dude. Yeah, mm. he uh, terminated. Mm-hmm. Terminated because of his comments on- Twitter. So apparently, 
there was a CrossFit gym that was scheduling a Pride event. This I think that okay. So if I read the article correctly, I read this too. I think that it was a company wide thing that CrossFit does. Like just to, no, I think it was just one location. No, no, no. The one location decided not to do it. Oh, right? like it was so, a rollout. Right. It was like a big thing. Like they were. Uh, I, th- I think it was the same time. Like because Gay Pride just happened, right? Didn't mm-hmm. we just have the so? Yeah. So here's what I'm reading. So, so I'm looking at the article right now. Now, knowing that CrossFit is a loose affiliate, I don't think, I don't think that they would ever do that. I'm not saying you're wrong. I don't know, but it doesn't no, no, no. sound like it something like, they it would It wasn't say. like a mandated thing. It was just like everybody was doing it. Like all okay. the CrossFit affiliates were doing like okay. something for gay pride and this owner decided, no, I'm not going to do anything for it and made a stance on it and, and put their two cents in. And then he came to the, that guy's defense and said that he supported him via mm-hmm. tweet. Mm-hmm. So here, so here's here's this statement that really got him because he could have supported him without saying the exact statement. Oh, I think he made it. I think I think that his decision to say what he did. I mean, he got, you know, he, here's the thing: you should be able to free be free to say whatever you want. You're not free from consequences. That you know, he works for a private organization. For sure, they can tell him to, to bounce for what he said, which is exactly what happened. Yeah. But what I'm reading here is there were traders at a CrossFit. Uh, facility in Indianapolis planned a workout to celebrate Indy Pride, and the gym owners got wind of it and they shut down the pl- the planned event. And then members heard about it and got pissed off, and many of them threatened to leave the gym. And then they got an email from the owners of the CrossFit gym, and the email says, "Our underlying goal for the staff and members at, uh, at CrossFit CrossFit Infiltrate that was the name of their gym, and our other gyms CrossFit White River and University Avenue CrossFit." is total health and well-being for the individual and the community. Total health involves the body, the emotions, relationships, and the spirit. At the foundational detractor from health, as we believe God sets the parameters for, is pride. We believe that true health forever can only be found within humility, not pride. Humility is seeing oneself as they truly are and as God truly defines them to be. As a business, we will choose to deploy our resources towards those efforts and causes that line up with our own values and belief. Fine. Totally okay. That's, I mean, right. agree or disagree. Right, right, right. That's their business. It's like the cake issue we talked about yeah, the other day. Yeah, yeah. It's you know. their business. Yeah. You know, you do it, that's that's yeah. up to you. It's your fault if you're going to turn members, away people. Members may leave. Right. That's up to them. Yep. Yeah. This guy who was the chief knowledge officer, didn't you know that position? Is that a position, a real? Knowledge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a- I am the guy with the knowledge. kind of like when Onnit comes up with their positions, you know, like, <laughs> and make up names. Optimization <laughs> yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Chief, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Kyle. It's a Chief title. cool guy or something yeah. like that. Anyway. Um, so he writes, this is the chief knowledge officer. He writes, as someone who personally, this is where he fucked up, straight yeah. up. Yeah, because he put his- As someone who personally believes celebrating pride is a sin, I'd like to personally encourage- CrossFit infiltrate for standing by their convictions and refusal refusing to host an indie pride workout. The and then he gets worse. The intolerance of the LGBTQ ideology towards any alternative views is mind blowing. Um, and then he says the tactics of some in the LGBTQ movement towards dissent is an existential threat to freedom of expression. The lack of tolerance for disagreement, which has been replaced with bullying, Twitter mobs, <coughs> promising consequences, should be a concern of your political stance. So, so he he, he, he just up. he he worded it bad. He fucked up. He worded yeah. it really bad because yeah. he he. Has, I would love to talk to him. I would love to have him on the show to talk about this because mm. he, he there's a couple things that are I think he's yes you're, I agree he worded it bad and I think he's a little well, confused. We, you know what's interesting mm-hmm. is we were just talking to our buddy Todd who's been who's been tied into the CrossFit community since it started mm-hmm. and he was telling me that you know CrossFit's known that what do you call them the two Russells. So mm-hmm. it's Russell Berg and then Russell something else. I don't know. Okay. And the real protective ones of the brand. Yeah. They were known as they were just like the thump. They would thump people. Like yeah. everyone knows that, uh, you know, CrossFit is the type of company and it's been that way since the beginning that if you fucked with them or you try yeah, and they'll tr- bounce you. Yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll they bounce like you or yeah, exactly. You. They'll come after you. And these two guys are supposed to be the two guys that have been doing that since it started. And so it'd be really interesting to, to interview him. I'd like to hear, his, I've seen. He's already done some like uh, apology letters, hasn't he? Yeah, my, I mean, my mm. my my personal opinion is there's a couple things he's confused about. First off, uh, the intolerance of the LGBTQ ideology. Um, if you're telling someone that they're wrong and bad, that's not being intolerant. That's I don't. You can tell me that, and I'm that I'm a I'm wrong and bad for something that I believe in strongly. 
I, I'm not going to like you. Does that make me intolerant? I guess maybe, but wh- why do I need to be tolerant to you when you're saying that I'm calling all these people sinners? You know, raise your hand if you're not a sinner. Good luck. Like that's everybody, right? That's right. the other. That's the other part of it. Right. Um, and he's using this as a public like representative rep- representative of the brand, which. Which is why he got fired. Yeah, I mean that's why. I mean, at the end of the day, that's why you get fired. Is because yeah. and, and it's not a threat to freedom of expression. Here's a threat to freedom of expression: if the LGBT community lobbied government to make it illegal to say shit like that or do stuff like that, that's a threat to freedom. Mm-hmm. The LGBT community boycotting you and putting social pressures and using voluntary means like Twitter and all that stuff. That's not a threat. That's just, that's called societal pressures, and that's always existed. Like you may say something that's not popular, nobody should, nobody has the right to f- to be force you. For it, yeah, you know? nobody has a right to force you, but everybody has a right to tell you to fuck. Yeah, yourself. really silly to me that he even got involved in it because I felt like even the gym, mm. the gym owners handled it fine. Yeah, I right. feel like they yeah. handled it fine. Like, listen, yeah, this, this is a what, statement out there. This is or... these are our fucking three locations. Mm-hmm. We have these are our religious beliefs. Yep. We're not going to support it. They have every right to do that. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And, and if you don't like it, don't leave their gym. That's it. Right. Go right. somewhere else. Right. And, or say whatever you want to say. Which I'm going to say to you, I'm going to say right now, here, 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 right here, right now, okay? And I, you can believe whatever you want. I'll always respect that. And if you're cool to me, I'll, I'll be cool to you. But if you're a business owner and you're outwardly saying these types of things about the gay community or men or about women or about a different race or whatever... Not a smart business move, personally. And the way I look at it is this. If I disagree, look, there's certain things I disagree with. I don't like, here, I'll give you an easy one. I don't like uh, people who are Marxist or I don't like that ideology. If you believe in Marxism, I think that's dumb. I think it's an evil ideology. However, if I have a gym and you're a nice guy and you come in and you're telling me you're Marxist, but you're a cool guy and you're, you know what? I'd rather us all work out together. We have them in our forum. Yeah, that's true. We do have a couple Marxists in our forum. (laughs) We have some in our forum. I'll debate the ideas with you, but, and if you're, if you're an asshole, I'll tell you the fuck out. Right. You know, but, but I would rather us be cool so we could talk about these things, debate them, discuss them or whatever. Right, because it's just a it, bad business Because, group. you know, in, in talking about uh, the forum members like this, there's been some great uh, intelligent conversations sure. and debates around there that others, I think, have learned from by reading them and listening to the thread or, or, mm-hmm. listen, or reading their thread. So, yeah, yeah no, I think there's... I, I, think, I think the company has every right to do what they did. Yeah, I think if somebody asked him his personal opinion, like, like what I would have said if I was him is I would say, hey, regardless if you agree with the positions of the CrossFit box owners or not it is their business and it is their right to do how they wish right of course if you want to leave their gym that's your right as well and that's it now if somebody his returned, problem was that he put his own personal beliefs it. and opinion in yep. there you yep. easily could have supported the gym you easily right you could easily could have stood behind them on what they were doing and the way they were making their stance because i think the way they handled it was completely fine and okay mm-hmm. i mean to each their own and then if business. somebody came out and asked him and said hey but what's your personal opinion then he could say well since you're asking me this is my own personal belief, and then say it, and then it's not gonna. You might get a, some backlash as well, but it's a little bit different, right, than him coming out and saying it's a sin, blah blah blah. Nobody asked you what your personal opinion is. Yeah, that's why. That's why that happened the way it did. I wonder if you're gonna see more and more of this with CrossFit <clears throat> because of, of of the growth of it. You know, talking again to our buddy Todd, you brought up a really good point that. You know, it really exploded almost overnight. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, if you were a part of it at the beginning, you probably doesn't feel like overnight because I know what that feels like. But you know, you had a lot of what he called characters that you know may have these extreme views mm-hmm. that are different, whether it be political or religious or whatever, that were there at the beginning that are part of the executive team that are there still. Mm-hmm that maybe don't align that much with the brand. I mean, that's. I wonder if we're going to see more and more... More falling out. Yeah. It's going to happen. It's a loose affiliation, so they have more freedom than other you know types of organizations to, to run things the way they want and say what they want to say and whatever. And CrossFit's backbone, or at least the roots, are, are, are rooted or come from that descent that I'm going to you know be a little different and wild and say what I want. So I... But now that's becoming more corporate. Maybe that's what because this sent a clear message. Mm-hmm. Like if you're a CrossFit owner and you have the same beliefs as Russell Berger, you're you've now seen a clean mess a clear excuse me message. So you may be less likely now to express that. You may look at that and say, okay, well, is it important for me to say that I'm running a business? Maybe I, and that's fine. That's you know you have to. 
there's always consequences to your opinions. I'm the I'm the belief I'm the firm belief that you know have your opinions and be okay with the consequences, but the consequences are the consequences, and it's and, and don't complain about them in the sense that you know, someone's infringing on your freedom to say what you want because, no, they're not. Have you heard him respond in any way? Like, do you, is he feel like he fucked up or is he like, I'm standing by the way I said? Have you heard anything? No, it doesn't sound like, it doesn't sound like, I haven't heard much. I haven't heard much about that. It's kind of getting mainstream, I think, because it's in the shadow of what happened with the Supreme Court and the ruling with the, uh, you know, with the Baker, mm -hmm. which I think was, I think it was, a, I think the just, the, the, the way that they, um, what's the word, decided on that case. I think the decision was right. I think the reasoning for their decision was wrong, though. It's very, very bittersweet what do you for, mean? for someone like me. Well, the Supreme Court said the baker should has the right to not be forced to make a cake for someone, which I agree with. I think if you have the right to associate. In other words, it, think about the flip the flip side. If if you If government can come and say to you, no, you're, you, we make a law saying you have to mm -hmm. work for someone else. That's a scary precedent. That's like slavery, right? Like you're forced to. Right. So I think that's right. But the reasoning they gave was for religious liberty. They, they said, but, he, but the reason why we're saying he's, he's okay with doing that is because of his religion. No, I, I disagree. I don't give a fuck what your reason is. It, it, you, it's your business. You right. should have a right to... To not work for, right, it, even if he wasn't religious, yeah, he has a right to make that decision. Yeah, it's his work. He's the one right. making the cake, so he should have the right to be like, "I don't want to make it for you because I don't like your face." Like whatever he wants, he should be able. But he should also, he's also going to suffer the consequences. He's going to suffer the consequences. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, let's be honest here. You're not good luck baking, not, being a being a bakery in San Francisco like that. That ain't happening. For good you, luck, right? like yeah. you're you're not going to bake a Pretty cake for yeah. newly legalized gay marriage. That's a huge market, my friend. Yeah, and I feel like that's an exploding. But anyway, you know, I, I think that it's it's not about religious liberty. It's just about association, freedom of association. Oh, I didn't know that's how they did it. Yep. Mm -hmm. That yep. is that is bittersweet. It, very bittersweet. Mm -hmm. Stupid. And and you know, here's the deal. People you know bring up things like the Civil Rights Act and stuff like that. Well, first off, the Civil Rights Act was necessary to reverse institutionalized racism from the government. The government was the biggest segregator and racist entity in America. I mean, public schools were the most segregated places in America. Public spaces, water fountains, buses, that kind of shit. So that was to erase a bunch of, you know, government, you know, type of segregation. When it comes to baking a cake for a gay wedding that didn't exist, from a government standpoint, that's a private business. And I also think today... In today's day and age, you may survive if you you have a sign on your storefront that says, you know, I'm not going to serve you if you're gay or if you're black or if you may survive a little bit. You're not going to definitely not going to become a mainstream brand. You're not going to survive that well. And you will open yourself up for to boycott, which rightly so, in my personal belief. I think if that's the kind of business you are, I think you're. I think you personally, I think you're an asshole. I, that's my personal belief. Right, right. And they ever, mm -hmm. and people out there can go out and pick it and do whatever the fuck they want. I would. Yeah, I right. would 100. percent If I saw a business with a sign like that, uh, it would probably piss me off enough to, you know, put it on my own social media, use my platform. Like a to pizza, tell people, like your favorite pizza parlor doesn't serve Italians. Like yeah. How fucking backwards? Yeah. Are you? yeah. How mad are you? How dumb would that right? be? Right. <laughs> so or dumb. you have to have pineapple on your yeah. pizza. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know the way I look at it. it. The way I look at it. We too, don't take the pineapple off here. Sorry, sir. The uh, way I look at it. You want our pizza? It comes with pineapple. Yeah. Yeah. And the way I look at it is, I look at the person saying that, and I go, "Well, guess what? You're not getting my money. I win." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Plus, if you make a law that forces, let's say the Supreme Court ruled in the other way, and they said, no, you have to make that cake. Like, all the baker has to do from that point forward is if he gets a gay couple that says, we want a gay wedding cake, he could literally just be like, mm, look, now the, I'm not, I don't have enough time on now my the schedule. Parts that make he doesn't that, have to, you know what I mean? He can lie. Now, the parts I don't know about the case that make me interested to know more is like, you know, is this a small town where the next cake store is two hours away? Mm. Or is this like one of many cake stores in the city? Because that makes a difference for me. Mm. Right, because like that does a, like it's a franchise. That does kind of fucking chain. yeah. It does kind of suck if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're gay and you want to go make mm -hmm. a, and you want to go get a cake for your wedding. Right, and well, this, it's the only cake store in town, oh, yep. and they're a bunch of bigots. I mean, that sucks. Here's how I feel, and I can see how that could really piss yeah, me. Yeah, it would yeah, piss sure. you off. Right, it, it but would. there still is the internet. So. Yeah, and here's how I feel about that. Right, right. Let's say because I, I put myself in that position, right? So I'm like, okay, let's say I belong to a group that's marginalized or whatever. Let's say I'm a gay man. I live in a small town. And I want to go get this cake made, and there's only one baker in town. 
And he says, no, because you're, you're gay. I would rather know that than go there and him know that he can't say that to me and right. instead say- That he's taking my money and then he's bashing gays yeah, right or, he, back, or right? he's saying to that, me- That would piss me off more. Yeah, I think. or he's saying to me, oh, um, I don't have any time on my schedule. Looks like I can't do it. Looks like I'm not going to be, you know, you know, I'm too- Because he could still do that. I would rather know and be like, oh, fuck, I should move because this town is really not Well, let's cool. be honest. Would you want somebody to begrudgingly make- a fucking cake no. for your wedding. That's you why. I mean? That's why the whole case is funny to it's me. It's like, like how no, you good will that cake, cake be? You know, it's so fucked up. Right. Like, no, you will make me cake. Man. I'm like the baker. I'm like, all right, I'll make yeah. you a cake. Yeah. Asshole. Now someone, now some, like <laughs> two like men thing at the time. Now like, someone, no. someone brought this up and they said, well, what if it was a doctor? What if you're, uh, you know, what if you're gay and the doctor's like, I'm not going to help. You're dying of a illness or wound, and you're in a small town, and the doctor's like, I'm not helping him because I'm gay. Would that be okay? And I said, well, first of all, I, I, again, freedom of association, you know, I think that that would be the worst fucking human being on earth. I think they would probably never be a doctor again if people found out. I think all those things, but trying to force them, you can't force well, someone to pri- not- Is he private or yeah. is he working for Kaiser? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, like Kaiser's you're... still private, but my point is, my point is- People can, you can't make yeah, but, a law you know, that Kaiser's makes people. Kaiser's pri- a private company, but I'm talking about a, because pri- Kaiser could still put out there. Oh, as, fire as, him. Yes, and oh, fire. Yeah, and they would. Right, and they would. They for would. That. That's oh what I'm saying. Oh my God, like, they would. If he was a private, are you saying, are you giving an example of a private, private doctor? It's his own practice by himself. Or are you talking about somebody who works for a large company? Because anybody who, would, any doctor that would do that for a large company in this day and age would get fired. A private doctor would be done. I mean, imagine if a doctor right now was exposed for not helping someone because of their religion, right. sex, you know, right. race. Just whatever them. reason. They yeah. would be shunned in society. Where did you get that example? Someone gave you that? In the, in in the forum, argument. we had this nice discussion about it. And I think it's, you know why? It's such a terrible. People bring up like crazy scenarios to I try know. and, and I get it. I get where that comes from, but no, man, like. That person would be their life would be destroyed, rightly so. I mean, if you see someone in front of you that needs your help and is dying, and you're gonna say and you're gonna say, "Nah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna help that person because I don't like their, you know, their skin color or whatever." You're an evil motherfucker, especially if you're a doctor. And they do sign or they do, you know, do the 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 oath that doctors do. That's like yeah, Hippocratic oath. Yeah, or... yeah. So, um, but you know, people like to use those examples. No, man, you shouldn't be forced to work for anybody for whatever reason. I think it's you have that freedom and you have the freedom to be an asshole. And here's the deal like you can't make people not be assholes with your laws because how are they going to how are they going to oh, yeah. f- dictate that? It's if I don't turn up the asshole. Dude, if I don't like you because of your religion or your sex or your race, I can and I but I know that oh I can't say that. It's not going to stop me. I'll just be like, "Oh yeah, no, I can't help you. Sorry, man. I'm busy." Or right. I'll make your cake and piss in it or do something terrible. Right. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like I would rather know that person say something and then be me be like I'm gonna give my money to somebody that's cool yeah to someone else not yeah. to because there's a lot of businesses that that would love to have your business that are not assholes you know what I'm saying yeah I know so it. I think that Baker's an asshole but I don't think you should be forced <laughs> I mean, it's just the bottom line <laughs> you guys ready to get moving on uh, moving again like I, we had like what maybe two weeks or three weeks the longest that we've been home I think in a in a uh, long time where yeah, we hadn't had I to go know. anywhere doing no. a couple travels yeah, yeah feeling antsy. Well, we take off, what, in a day or two, we're off to Discovery Bay for a few days, and then we get back, and then we're off to L.A. again. I don't know what day we leave down there, but that'll be cool. It's going to be fun, man. I love going, I love doing these trips with you where we have, um, because the first trip is us working on the business. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to be on podcasts, we're not interviewing anybody, we're not doing events. So this is going to be good. I hope to write a couple programs with you guys. We'll see what happens. We're gonna miss the the hustle Magic though, which kind of sucks. I mean, Taylor Taylor will make it with Eli, but dude, I was if you're hope- an entrepreneur, HustleCon is that's that's a great place. Great, good connections and uh, incredible speakers. Oh, I know. Yeah. He, I know he's super pumped to go, and I know he's. I believe he's bringing Eli with him. I was trying to go also, but it looks like the LA trip is gonna conflict with that. But we still have the the tickets for the audience. So if you guys are listening and you guys are interested in going there, it's in Oakland. It's in Oakland. So if you're a local Bay Area person and it's on Friday the 22nd. We got a discount for them, right? Yeah, yeah. dude. Hooked up fat. Save 150 bucks. That's expensive. I mean, it's saving a substantial amount of 150 money. 150 bucks, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, save 150 bucks with the, the Mind Pump uh, discount. So you guys can go to the hustle, hustlecon.com and then use Mind Pump and you get 150 bucks uh, off tickets. And I, everyone that I know that's been to it, I haven't been to one myself. I've seen videos and clips. Of, obviously, we've talked and met Sam Parr. So 
everybody that I know that's been to one of these says that they're incredible. So mm-hmm. extremely valuable and worth your time. You guys, if you're a Mind Pump listener, you hopefully will run mm-hmm. into uh, Taylor mm-hmm. and Eli. They should be running around. Look for the good looking guy with the ponytail. Dude, yeah. dude can I just say right for now? For all the man buns. Can I just say, <laughs> I'm now, you know, like week two weeks into uh, following the split program. Oh, yeah. You're, a good, you're looking kind of jacked, bro. We did, a, we did a good, we did Small. a really good job, dude. Mm-hmm. Really <laughs> fucking good job. Herself no, off. No, 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 no. We're so good. No, you know, look, we have another pro, we have other stuff that, you know, we, we, we write things and we test them and stuff like that. People don't know the process, right? Yeah. And sometimes we'll test it and, and we'll come back and, you know, Adam may come back and say, okay, we need more mobility work here because I felt this problem or, mm-hmm. you know, just fine tuning stuff. But every once in a while we knock it right out the park and- uh, split was just, it's what a great fucking workout, man. I can feel things changing in my body. I can tell usually right away if something's going to be really effective. So, and we're getting a lot of good feedback. It's good yeah. Stuff. I've seen a lot of, a lot of cool comments coming out of split and people are excited about it. It's, I'm excited. It's tough. To, I'm excited to see competitors because we have a couple competitors that I know of at least that are using it to, for prep. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Leading into their show. No, no, I'm pumped for that too. Yep. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use a coupon code MINDPUMP for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Mike Safai. Ah, oh, that's uh, Aria's brother. Hey, hey. Yeah. Recently took a VO2 max test. My primary type of endurance training is jiu-jitsu sparring. I performed the VO2 test on a treadmill but have not run in a long time. I personally feel that if I were to run more frequently, I would become acclimated to that type of aerobic activity and would have received an even higher score. In your opinion, do you feel to truly test your cardiovascular endurance, you should perform a test that you're not acclimated to? So this is a, a good question. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, basically to paraphrase, took a test on a treadmill. He's got a lot of jujitsu endurance because he does a lot of jujitsu. And I know I know Mike. I follow him. Right. And he's, but it's the, not specifically what he was testing. Yeah, and by the way, uh, I would just like to say that the Safai family has got oh, the they're, fucking- They're beasts. The genes of the gods. Right. They all work hard, but they all- Their sister, yeah, the brothers- Everybody looks yeah, awesome. Yeah. They're like, someone needs to do a documentary on these people. Anyway- um, he did, you know, VO2 max test on a treadmill, probably got a score he wasn't satisfied with. And so he's wondering, like, how do you test your cardio endurance? Should you perform a test you're not acclimated to? Here's the deal. You, whenever you train in, your body adapts to in a pretty specific way. There are general broad adaptations you'll get. Like, if you do a lot of jujitsu, you're going to gain a lot of general endurance as well. But not nearly as much endurance as you gain for your specific type of endurance when you do jujitsu because when you're doing something specific that re- that calls upon a specific type of movement pattern specific type of endurance your muscles are moving a particular way you're holding yourself a particular way you're get you're you're, you're basically breathing patterns everything is everything. all different so you're just more efficient at what you do a lot of so if you want to know what your endurance is for a particular event then test your endurance for that event so the yeah, endur- but you can't VO2 test jiu-jitsu. Like you're not going to be able to strap all up to the machine and right. be able to do that. Well, here's my point. Let's That's- let's say he trained just running to improve his VO2 max and he stopped doing jiu-jitsu. And he's like, that oh, would, shit, I got my VO2 max yeah, up. Yeah, that wouldn't be. And he, he wouldn't, he wouldn't I mean, let's it. be honest. How often, and, and I've VO2 tested a bunch of times. And Have I've, you? Yeah, yeah. What's the, what's yeah, the yeah, test yeah. feel Me like? Too. It's. I mean, it's. you have a hard time breathing. You have a, you have a th- apparatus in your mouth and you're running. So there's tra- that by itself, which is an adaptation, you know, just having, right. like getting adjusted and used to having some shit like that right. hard to breathe through. And then they just they just keep ramping your treadmill up until you pretty much can't handle it anymore. Yeah. And then they, they break you off and then they show you where you're heart rate was at when you hit your cardio threshold and you can improve your vo2 max like on the day like yeah. every day like yeah. you could literally have you could go do a vo2 max test and then the next day like go do a max effort like cardio max effort, and like do that like five days in a row come back and retest and you'll have already increased it so i'm not like a this was not a test that 
I used very often with clients or we really even cared too much about it for that exact reason. Like mm-hmm. you're saying, Sal, is that if your main thing is to increase your endurance with jujitsu, mm-hmm. using the VO2 test eh, maybe as a baseline, but not to change what, what I'm training. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like maybe is if it, I'm curious, it, right? Is it the Davies or the Coopers where they, they really just like test on like your verbal like affluency so like after you're done like if you could speak clearly <laughs> oh, wow. i don't think know? that i don't think that's either one davies is something else davies is yeah okay maybe davies is, a, davies is a movement test either way i liked it because it was more like i could do something like uh specifically like if, if, if i was doing jujitsu and i and after that i could see like how quickly i could then you know like gather my composure and be able to to speak or if i went like to exceed that to where it took me a while to catch my breath. Right. Um, that's really like as simple as, as, as I needed as far as a gauge of like how, um, you know, adapted I was endurance wise. Yeah. Well, or, or it was a great way to do, or I would do it with, if I was training someone in jujitsu and I really have no jujitsu background or any business training someone with this, but I, I know enough that I would go, okay, you know, I would take a, a handful of some of the most important drills that you use in jujitsu and, and we would measure that like so mm-hmm. and Sal can probably contribute better than I can here. But whatever those roles are or specific moves and then we would do it for time and mm-hmm. we would try and improve upon that. Mm-hmm. So it's like, OK, you you can get 40 slam, you know, of the, the heavy bag slams and this many rolls and this many whatever in this amount of time. And then let's let's measure that. Let's improve upon that. Let's shed some time off of that and you get better and more efficient at that because those movements are more applicable to what you're doing in mm-hmm. jiu-jitsu than getting on a treadmill, putting a mask over your face, mm-hmm. and running. Like that's. Have you guys done the lactate threshold where they no. actually do the prick? Yeah, and like, and they they measure out like you know as far as like how much lac- lactate or whatever you're producing. So you, like you go through these movements, you're able to see kind of how quickly you recover like from that aspect so that's interesting to me too that's another one yeah if you want you know here's why cross training exists in the first place cross for cross training exists to be able to give you improvements and benefits that the specific sport or whatever you're training in may either a not give you or b to prevent overuse injuries from constantly re- doing the same repetitive stuff so cross training is really good for that now the bottom line is if you want more endurance for jujitsu nothing nothing is going to give you more endurance than doing more jujitsu for jujitsu. So that, that's just the bottom line. If you want to get really good at that type of endurance, just do more jujitsu. Now the problem becomes, well, what if my hands get really sore or my joints start to bother me because I'm doing so much damn jujitsu? Now you would incorporate cross training where you'll get some carryover, in which case then I would say do probably sprints. I think sprints uh, or like, what do they call it? Fart liking, which I hate that name. Yeah, <laughs> fart liking. I know, isn't yeah, that funny? Yeah. That's actually a real world, by, real, real wor- word, by the way. But a fart like is like where you do a slow jog and then you do a sprint and then you do a slow jog and do a sprint. That, to me, that form of running mimics more of the type of stamina that you would need for jujitsu than just long running or just doing sprints. Because jujitsu it, is a sport where you explode and then you hold. And then you explode, and then you hold, and and that tends to be the type of stamina that you want. Well, well that's what I meant by like a movement. Like I, I don't know, if there, I'm sure there is a getting up off the ground technique, right? Sure. And I would have them do that for time, right? So we would do it for a sprint, which or a, for a short amount of time. So for one minute, how many times can you get up and get back down? You know, mm-hmm. in one minute time, and we count however many that is, and then we improve upon that. And mm-hmm. the, you improving upon that will probably have some carryover into your VO2. I would imagine that you would probably increase that a little bit, but more importantly. It applies to jujitsu more than, again, running on a treadmill with a mask on your face. So, you know, I always use the, the tests like that with people that were playing in sports as a baseline to give me an idea. Like, what I don't want to see is it get worse. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to take a client who's hiring me to improve their, you know, jujitsu endurance or basketball endurance or football endurance. And I go about my programming and we do a VO2, we start off, we do a VO2 max test just to see kind of where their baseline, where they're at. And then four weeks later, we come back and we check it yeah. again and they got worse. Here's the, here, That's not good. I'm not doing my job if I can't improve yep. upon it. And the big problem I have with, with metrics like this is then people start to rely on them. Mm-hmm. And here's, here's the thing, when you're doing jujitsu, there's so many variables and factors that can contribute to how well you feel during your matches. Everything mm-hmm. from the technique you're using to 
how well you execute the techniques to the type of game that you're playing on the ground, all the and more. All those things will contribute to whether or not you have a lot of stamina or not. Here's another example. Let's say you're a swimmer and you want to improve your VO2 max to give you more endurance. You could do that or what if you got what if your technique got better so that every time you did a stroke in the pool, you moved a little further and moved a little faster. Now you're using the same amount of energy but you're more efficient. All these things play a role and the problem with just measuring things like VO, it's like when bodybuilders measure body fat percentage. Right. Yeah. You know, like oh my body. That's fat why went a down. lot of a lot of right. pros and and guys don't they don't care because it doesn't matter. Yeah, they they yeah. have to look a certain way on stage. You can actually go down in body fat and look less lean because oh. you're flat or because your muscles aren't right. pumped or whatever. It's cool as a coach, right? Because you can you can show like metrics. That's to, it. To, to it's your, just another. That's it's, all it is. It's though. just it's, another feedback mechanism. It's flashy and and it you know not, I I got caught in that for a while. Where I wanted to like I mentioned lactate thrush. These are all things that I was like, oh wow, they use these in, in like sports specific science, you know, labs where they're they're testing these high performing mm-hmm. athletes. But really, like you said, you can manipulate it within that same day. So how valuable really? And, and is there's it? also right. perceived, like the perceived effort, perceived intensity, which is subjective. There are objective metrics and measurements, but there's also subjective stuff. Like for example, if I told Justin right now, hey, let's go see, uh, let's go see how much you could squat. And he goes and he, ah, he squats and you ask him afterwards, was that your max? He'd be like, yeah, that was totally my max. Well, what if I went back in time and I said to Justin, Justin, if you can squat and I come up with a number that's higher than the one that I know he did, you know, pounds. Yeah, yeah. If, if you could squat, let's say 10 pounds over that, uh, you'll get a million dollars. He may perceive himself to be stronger and actually may be able to be able to lift the weight more. That perception of intensity and that mm. perception of effort makes a big difference. Your mood will influence whether or not you're feeling like you have more stamina, more endurance while you're training mm-hmm. as well. Like all mm-hmm. these pl- things play a role. And I'm not saying all of this to make you think that it's not worth it at all to measure metrics. Right. I'm just putting it in context. No, you use it the same way you use feedback. body fat, scale, HRV, yep. you know, step yes. count. I mean, they're all, these all are, of it. yeah, I think it's a great tool and I'm not saying it's not worth you doing it. But don't it. live or die by it. Yeah. Right. Like, exactly. It's not It's not worth you focusing on just trying to increase your VO2 because if you, the best way to do that is go invest in one of those $100 stupid Bane masks, wear it on your face, <laughs> yeah. run on a treadmill on an incline, and then go back and test your VO2 in a week or two of doing that every single day. Right. Because you're specifically training for that. Exactly. Metric. And yeah. I bet you you're, you'll you you'll crush the test, but then ask sure. yourself, did your jiu-jitsu get any better? You know, probably not. So. Yeah, I remember back, you know, back when I was training, guys would go and do all these crazy hardcore endurance type training and try and come back and be more to see if it would apply to their training. And I would ask them, like, are you, you know, how do you feel? And be like, oh, I feel kind of burnt out. I don't really feel like I have more stamina or energy. And so I, I, I had them write down what they were doing. And it was a bunch of hill running and long running and all this stuff. And I knew what their problem was. The problem was they had very poor stability and strength. Nobody strength trained. So I said, hey, try this out. Instead of doing all that crazy endurance, just keep doing jujitsu. Keep doing, you know, add an extra day of jujitsu or whatever. So do more rolling. And then let's have you lift weights twice a week and focus on heavy lifting yeah. and do like three to five reps. And they'd be like, oh, but three to five reps, like that's not going to give me stamina for jujitsu. I said, no, it's going to build your base strength, which will give you stamina. They did, and within three weeks, they came back like, dude, fucking huge improvement. I feel like so, so much more stable. I'm not getting as tired as easily. And it's you got to kind of measure these things out, so it's it's not as easy as you think, but definitely uh, the type of adaptation that you get is very specific to what you're doing to get that adaptation in the first place. And if you want more endurance for a sport, nothing is going to work better mm. than doing more of that sport. Right. If you're stronger, you don't struggle as hard. That too, yes. Next up is... Synthesis 91. Can you guys talk about set points? Will your body always want to return back to its set point? We discussed this a while back. A long time ago. Yeah, it's been a long time. I, you know, I hate this. I hate it when people say this. Um, is there a set point? Yeah. I mean, to a certain extent, your body doesn't once want- once they define that. Yeah, your body doesn't want to go below a certain body weight because then you might be sick or malnourished. Well, here's the thing. I think I think they do exist. I just think it's always moving. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like there, sure you have a, a, a like I have an air right now where I'm currently at, like um, movement wise, the amount of muscle I have in my body, the age that I'm at hormonally, exactly right now at this moment, my body kind of has a set point where it wants to, where it's comfortable, where it doesn't, where it wants to be, right? But that easily can change 
when I start changing all these things up, when I, if I change my hormones, if my stress levels change, if I start to increase volume in my training, if I start consuming way more more food than what I'm consuming right now, all these things will start to well, ma- so the question manipulate is, that and change the that. The question is, is there a set point that if you try to go around it, your body's going to push you to get to this other set point. Well, I think then that's where I mean there's a there's a little bit of truth to a set point is there is definitely a point where you know you will find yourself and let's just we'll use both directions, right? Both whether you're trying to gain or lose where it gets way more challenging, right? Where it's like my body my body when it gets and we'll use me as an example and everybody's uniquely different, but once I start pushing beyond 220 pounds of of lean mass, my body just says like it doesn't want to be there. It just the scale. I don't have the skeletal structure, but I've done it. I've I can push beyond that, but it's about where it's about my threshold of where it, my body naturally really wants to be. And the same thing goes when you're cutting. When you're cutting and you want to be super lean, I find when I get down to like seven eight percent, it's you know with some good discipline and consistency, it's pretty easy to get there. The difference between that and when I would get ready for stage is damn near death. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My body is fighting me and telling me like, no, we don't want to be 2% body fat, Adam. And here, and this is why I hate the whole set point conversation. Your body's set point, if you had a set point, is healthy. That's where your body wants to be. Your body literally mm-hmm. wants to be in a place where it's lean but not shredded, uh, you know, muscular but not so muscular that you're force feeding yourself, strong, mobile, fit, right. healthy, right. not extreme. That's what your set point is. It's able to overcome whatever environment yeah. you're introducing. Your, your set point isn't obesity. This is why I hate this because people are like, oh, my body's set point wants oh, me to be- Oh, fuck no. Six, you, know, you know why the people- <laughs> that, well, is, do, do, that is so not true. Do you know my why people wants think that? me to be fat. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know why they, people think that? Because they're confusing their their set behaviors yeah. with, some, or with some set point, biological set point. Well, that, or they fucked their metabolism up and, they can't, and it doesn't make sense to them. All That's- right more to me that's more common than anything is somebody who has absolutely destroyed their metabolism who is 200 300 plus pounds and they're not eating very much it doesn't make sense to them that this must be my body's set point it wants to be well let's again 250 pounds because I'm I'm only eating 1500 calories and my body doesn't seem to go anything below that and then they go back and they splurge at two again th- I will yeah. I will refer back to what I said your set point is you want to be healthy at that in that situation if you've dieted and yo-yo dieted and overworked yourself and, and did all kinds of crazy things to your body your body at that point may think its healthiest safest point is to be at 200 pounds consuming while you're consuming 1500 calories well that's the important point to yes. make right there yes now can you change that yes but ultimately your 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 natural set point is is a is probably where most people would be pretty comfortable mm. for the most part um but yeah people confuse it with behaviors they think oh my body just wants to be 40 pounds overweight no your behaviors are so set in this mm. lifestyle where you eat shitty and don't move that you think it's your body forcing you when in reality it's you that has a don't, it's like a psychological set point. you're exactly you're mm. not willing if you want to move your set point, you have to change your lifestyle. Right. That's the bottom line. And changing your lifestyle is not easy. Humans are very complex. So when we're talking about things that you do every single day, like eat and move and how you think, you know, fundamentally changing those, like, well, there's a whole there's a whole like side of medicine called psychology that tries to deal with that because that is a very complex issue. Mm-hmm. So it may feel impossible. Only and only it's not impossible. It's just you're dealing with having to change fundamentally change how you eat how you think and how you move which makes up a pretty large part of of your life i think this this whole buzz term set point is just a, a marketing ploy it was used for a while yeah there, for and, sure. and i think it's just it's just a, a way to make people feel like oh yeah see that's why i'm struggling is mm. i'm this is my set point and oh if i click here i can find out where my body set point is by putting in my if i follow this i'll change my set yeah. point. right right which yeah. that's all a bunch of bullshit and gimmicky stuff just to get you to buy yeah. something at the end of the day like it, it does our does everybody's like skeletal structure and metabolism and age and all those things matter and do, do you have an an area where your body naturally wants to be absolutely but then can you can manipulate that both for good and bad absolutely Dude, yeah. you can manipulate totally. that your your new set point you can and i've i've done this over my the course of my lifting like my set point at one point used to be at this 
160 to 170 pound male. And that was based off the activity I was doing. That was based off the amount of lifting and understanding that I had with, with training and nutrition. Like that's kind of where my set point was. Does that right. mean that I couldn't move it? Does it mean I couldn't be healthier or less healthy by making poor, and poor choices periods in your life where you're going through, I'm like, you know, 20 years old. I'm like, I'm at the highest as far as like testosterone and like my hormones and everything. I'm still growing as, as a, as a human being. And there's points where that process slows down, of course, but you know at that point too like it the psychological piece becomes even more prevalent like this is how i have to you know pursue on if i want if i have a specific goal i want to recalibrate you know and get to a new uh, now there's also a point to be made here though with like what lane talked about with the adipose tissue and in increasing your fat cells every Mm -hmm. time you do this yo-yo dieting and Absolutely. Like if you continue to lose weight, then gain a bunch back, lose weight and gain a bunch back, that it becomes easier for your body to want to be fat. Your body remembers. Yes, it remembers that. And it's easier for it to get fat again if you were there before. So the up and down thing is one of the worst things that we could possibly have done to our bodies. And so, yeah, it, it probably does feel that mm-hmm. way. I mean, I, I noticed that right now. I mean, I feel like right now because of how little I'm, how I'm moving right now, I'm, my hormones have completely changed. That man, if I eat outside of my you know caloric restriction where I need to be to kind of maintain, it feels like it just goes right to my gut. It goes right to my stomach. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, that's because I've put on body fat in my stomach enough time and then lost it, put it back enough time that you bet your ass it just takes a little bit of outside the boundaries and my body starts to put it, that that I, body fat. I had on. a I had a so here's a good example of this. I had a conversation with uh, Jessica over the weekend, and I've been using her as an example because I completely forgot how dramatic of a change she had made with her body's natural set point, or, or if you will, or her natural metabolism. When I met her two and a half years ago, because we were going over these numbers, and I was like, is that right? And she did. She tracked everything. She weighed 135 pounds. She was consuming 1,300 calories a day, and she was doing seven plus hours of running a week. So that's not just regular elliptical cardio. That's actually running. Mm. Seven hours of running, 135 pounds, and consume 1,300 calories. Anytime she'd consume over 1,300 calories, poof, she'd gain weight. That was two and a half years ago. Today, she'll consume over 2,200 calories a day. Now is what she eats. She weighs 119 or 120 pounds, and she does zero cardio. Just to give you an example of how much you can change the body, I mean, you're talking about the difference of eight to 900 calories in food and a reduction in manual calorie burning by a lot. You're talking about seven hours of cardio every single week. And that's not some wild, like crazy example. I see it with no, the people exact, I coach all the time. Katrina has the exact same story. It's that crazy. She, I met her. She was a at college athlete. And the way she stayed in shape was she ran her ass off. She ran for miles and miles every day. And, you know, or, and when she trained inside the gym, everything was circuit training based and, you know, when she was in great shape, she just tightened her diet up a little bit. When she was in not so great shape, she was eating pizza and whatever the fuck she wanted and just trying to run it all off. And it, her calories were typically anywhere between 15, 1600 calories just to keep herself at a mm-hmm. lean body weight and running that much. And she's a zero cardio now, lifts weights four days a week and is able to consume damn near a thousand more calories a day than she was before. It's fucking wild. Yeah. But I mean, that's I mean, exactly. It's an example of and how- And you can go in the opposite direction. The set point that you know people try and market to you is always changing and you have the control you can control that and absolutely change that in all different directions and you can be very extreme about it so if you're somebody who's using the set point thing as an excuse of why you can't build muscle or lose body fat again this is more of a psychological set point than it is an actual physical set point next question is from natalia goody I want to understand the best way to warm up. Is stretching before lifting weights a warm up? So first, I would like to talk about the importance of a proper <clears throat> warm up, or what we like to call priming. Mm. Now, I will admit, for most of my career in fitness, I did not understand the full impact of the importance right. of a proper. It was almost warm-up. an afterthought. I thought of it as I thought it part I thought, of being young. I thought it yeah. began and ended with injury prevention. That's it. I yeah. thought okay. Here's why I have my clients warm up. Here's why I warm up. It's to prevent injury. I had I did not consider that it that that was the absolute minimum that a yeah, proper warm up should do. Of it, yeah. The reality is the minimum a good warm up will do is, is prevent injury. The maximum it will do is take your current workout and make it like not exaggerating 10 to 15% more effective in terms right. of muscle building, fat loss, 
just through better connection and better movement. It's like it's like adding a turbo. Like take your tur- take your current workout, and then it's like sprinkling a little bit of creatine on it, or a little or like like a little bit of turbo on it. You don't have to change your workout. You just primed it so well that that same workout is way more effective. That's the different. That's how big of an impact it can make. Now that being said, you know you can do general uh, warm ups and priming. But nothing is going to be come close to one that's specific for your body. And what I mean by that is, let's say I want to do a general priming session for barbell squats. I, can, I know I'm going to squat. Well, I'll probably do some hip priming, uh, maybe some you know leg swings. Maybe I'll do some single leg toe touches. Maybe I'll warm up my ankles and my feet a little bit. I'll do some short foot and some combat stretch with activation. And then I'll get in and, and do my squats. Or... Knowing my body and knowing exa- the, the issues that I have with my body, which is going to be different from person to person, I'll do specific types of priming for my body. For example, one for me that is works really well for barbell squats is to sit in a squatted position and do a band pull apart or do kind of like this wide row with the band because I have issues with my thoracic and I have issues with depth with my squat. And it's just one that's more specific to me. If you prime your individual body properly before you lift weights, it's like a new workout. I really don't know how any other way. I mean, when we wrote Prime and we started mm-hmm. implementing that shit, I was just like, wow, well, this is a totally different ball game completely. Yeah, I keep evangelizing it just because I mean, I think that it's still it's still a new concept for a lot of people that work out. I think that um it's it's something that um people when they finally like take you know, like ownership of it and they want to actually uh, vest some time into it because I think that a lot of people are still in the mentality that like, you know, time is everything and like, well, I just want to get to the workout and um, what is this really going to do for my workout? Well, when you actually go through the process, you feel it. It's, it's something that you tangibly feel. So that's day that, one, day one, like you're, you're going to feel how um, everything like fires off the way that you want it to. So it's really just, it, it's setting things up. So that way, when you're actually in your workout, um, you know, as, as you're go- experiencing these movements and these lifts, you're going to actually feel it where you're supposed to feel it. And also you're going to get other muscles that are going to contribute and stabilize mm-hmm. your joints, how they should, that, that you're going to feel that how that all works together. So if you do it properly, but it does take some education. Well, I word, we just, I think it's human nature. We don't want to, we don't want to fix something until it's broken and we don't realize it's, it's broken until the, we get the crazy red flags of the injuries and the aches and the pains. And at least this is how it was for me personally. Like as a trainer, I went through all the certifications. I learned all this stuff. And I remember, I remember, I remember teaching it. I remember telling clients like, oh, you need a foam roll. You need to do some of these stuff like that. And just, you know, do it. Like it's, you know, I tell them I didn't want to. And I used to even tell them like, I don't want to waste my time, you know, on the floor and in the mat for 20, 30 minutes of your workout with me. Like I want you, I mean, that's something you can do on your own. Like with me, we're, we get to yeah. work, you know, I used to tell my clients yeah. that. So I'd show day one that was, I would show them the corrective movements that I, I knew they should be doing. But I wouldn't like drill. I didn't put that much effort into it. And part of that reason was because I was a young 25 year old kid who had no aches and pains and didn't really I had great I had great posture and I took care of myself really well. And so I didn't have nagging pains and I didn't know what it felt like to have hips, my hips lock up or my neck bothering me or my shoulder nagging or to hear this clicking noises. I didn't know any of that stuff yet. It wasn't until I got into my 30s did it really open my fucking eyes and I went like, holy shit, mm-hmm. Like I consider myself a very fit person and I'm starting to see and feel and notice these things. And then I started to actually apply all the knowledge that I had to myself and I went, holy shit. Bunch of know? light bulbs. Yeah, man. game changer, how I felt. And then, I, then at that moment, it became this, this was a priority. Now I start, when I would take a client, it would be like, that's all I would spend time doing. It's like, this is your foundation. Like we got to make sure your body is in the optimal position before we go and do these lifts or one, we we could potentially hurt ourselves Mm -hmm. or two, we're not maximizing your results because your body's not even working properly. Well, think too about like, and I know some people might be able to identify with this as far as like, you know, ramping up into like, well, okay, now I'm, I'm adding load that I feel like, okay, now I'm comfortable. Like I've, I've done the proper amount of sets, you know, kind of leading up to that. 
So for me, that's eliminated that whole process. So if I'm going to squat, like I don't have to do like an extra five sets of warm up to really get into that space where I feel like everything is firing and, and, and you know, supporting me properly. That's a good point because people will be like, oh, I don't have time for, uh, you know, a good priming session. Well, you're probably doing a bunch of warm up sets mm-hmm. of the exercises anyway. So you actually have the same. It's It takes about the same amount of time. It takes me a good. Yep. 15 to 20 minutes max to do yeah. my priming session. And it saves me time because I get into the exercises very quick. Look, here's the here's the deal. Grease in the groove. Before, okay, when your body hurts, what you need to understand is before the pain comes, there was weeks, months, or years of, dysfunction. of inefficiencies, dysfunction, or dysfunction. So what does that mean? That means for weeks, months, or years, you were getting a percentage of what you could have been getting from your workouts. You were literally getting less than the potential. You just you just didn't know it because nothing was hurting yet. And then when it started to hurt, you're like, oh shit, I need to start priming my body properly. You've already wasted a lot of time or at least a lot of potential that you'd be getting from your workouts. Uh, the second thing is I can't stress how individual or how much more effective it is when you prime individually uh, on an individual basis. I'll give you another good example. Let's say you have really bad forward shoulder. You are going to prime to bring the shoulders back and down before any fucking exercise, okay? So it's not necessarily specific to the exercise, although priming can be. It's more specific to your body because is my ability to hold myself into better posture going to benefit me knowing that I have forward shoulder? Is that going to benefit me when, my, when I squat? Yes. Is it going to benefit, benefit me when, my, when I do a row? Yes. What about when I bench press? Yes. Overhead press? Yes. What about when I do a curl? Yes. Pretty much anything I do is going to be more effective and efficient if I, if I work on the imbalances and issues that my individual body has. And that's what makes priming different than a warm-up. Now, the question here is, is stretching mm. before lifting weights a warm-up? Static stretching, typically I don't, we don't advise be doing it before. About that, yeah. yeah, but it, for, for correctional purposes, sometimes well, we it could ex- be okay. We have to explain why static stretching, which to me I think is one of my biggest pet peeves that I see like in sports. I see this a lot. I see mm-hmm. young coaches with athletes, they have their kids all out there, and then they're holding these long static stretches right before they go into yeah. a game. Like right. this is not ideal. Like if you're going to do some sort of a, a stretch, like a, a dynamic stretch would be more ideal. You're just moving in through and out. Yeah, in and, out. And, and that's because when you sit there and you hold hold a stretch for 30 seconds or longer, you're telling the central nervous system to relax, to calm down, to relax. And then you've, and you all, everyone's felt it before, right? You're in a stretch. It's like, oh, it's rough. And then all of a sudden it's like, like you feel this release. Yeah, or you get and deeper. It, and yeah. And, and, and range of motion is the focus right? versus it, like, you know, taking you in that like shortened position, which is what you're going to apply on the field. Right. Yeah. Look here. You don't, here's just from another angle. If I'm stretching my hamstr- hamstrings with a static stretch, and I'm holding the stretch, and I gain an additional three inches of range of motion. What I've done now is I've told my body to have this new range of motion that I have no strength within. So now when I'm running or fighting or wrestling or whatever sport I'm doing, I'm going to move in a new range of motion that I don't necessarily have good control over, which Mm -hmm. increases my risk of injury. This is why studies show that static stretching just applied willy-nilly pre-workout or pre-event raises the risk of injury, not decreases it. Mm-hmm. Now, are, is static stretching okay before a workout? It depends. For correctional purposes, sometimes it's okay. Using the example of forward shoulder, if someone's forward shoulder is so fucking bad that I, it's hard for me to get their shoulders back, I may static stretch their chest. Of course, before they go do, sh- especially yeah. before they go do bench press right. or something. Because- Just to get shit out of the way. Right. 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 But, yeah. but no, for the most part, general static stretching well, we, will increase your risk. We programmed all of this in, in Maps Prime. So that's, that's why, what Maps Prime is designed for. 100%. Right. No, this, there's an a, assessment tool that comes with it. So you do a, a full, you know, there's three tests that come with it and it will help you kind of figure out you know, what areas that you have some sort of dysfunction or imbalances at and then where you should be priming and or if it's really bad, what types of fortification sessions that you should be doing, which is more along the lines of static stretching and self myofascial release going that direction. So we've, I mean, again, and I know I've said this multiple times, like I, I think the most valuable program that we have is the Prime Pro Bundle, which which is both Prime Maps Prime Pro, which is highly recommended if you have nagging pain, shoulder stuff. That's knee the stuff. real correction. Yeah, that's yeah. like if you if you if you complain about that stuff, that's a must. If you're just somebody who wants to be more preventative and you don't have any aches or pains, but then you do 
recognize and understand the importance of you know properly stretching or warming up before you go into a workout, then Maps Prime is hands down the most beneficial thing. I mean, I love to have somebody who just comes on board in Mind Pump. I always tell them like, listen, if you're already following a program, like I'm not asking you to stop here, especially if you like it and you're seeing great results and you trust the person that's programmed for you. Follow their program, add Prime and Prime Pro into that and see how much you start to get more out of their program just by the biggest, priming correctly. The biggest opportunity I see with Prime is for athletes to use to use the priming session that they figure out for their body mm-hmm. before their event. Right. That would be that's such a an application that has so much potential. Like before you go on the field, do your priming session that you've learned that is for your body, and then go watch your performance and see what happens. Next question is from Xavier San Five. Have you guys ever thought about using Mind Pump as a platform to do philanthropy? <laughs> I know why you asked this. For sure. You put this question in there. Uh, for sure. It's 100%. We're already heading that direction right now. Uh, we first had to get Doug paid, though. Um, I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. that was definitely a, a priority that first. Was on the list. Yeah, no, for sure. You can't you can't afford that stripper and cocaine habit if we weren't paying him first. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when I brought that up years ago? Doug, Doug got that. so mad. Yeah, we were hella early on. I said, Doug, Doug's coach, don't say that. People are gonna think I took cocaine. <laughs> Relax, Doug. No, uh, no. This is uh, this has been something that early on. I remember Sal always said that this was before we made a dollar. Yeah. Uh, Sal said, you know, my ultimate goal is to you know, eventually start a nonprofit, whether it be through or with Mind Pump or whatever. I know that's been an end goal of his and, you know, most certainly think that's, I mean, I wanted to get a Ferrari. That's what I think I said earlier. <laughs> is what I said, but we, we all agree that this is something that we're trying to implement into uh, Mind Pump and, you know, part of our conversation and us aligning with Mir and uh, Brian, which is an epi- the CEO. You guys will hear that episode mm-hmm. coming real soon here. And, uh, we talked a lot about this. And oh I, yeah, I, I think, I think as as a as a private business, if you're successful, I think you have a responsibility to find purpose and meaning for what you do. So right. No, we had we had we had we had a responsibility to first become successful. Though. Yeah. Yeah. So that, let's, oh yeah. Let's no, make that clear. no. No. And I don't mean I don't mean you have to give or be part of a charity or or do philanthropy. I think. Your responsibility, if you're trying to be successful, is to is to literally find purpose and meaning because nothing will drive you to do a better job than if you feel like there's a purpose behind what you're doing. So that may just mean that you want to make the most, you know, uh, cost effective brakes on a car. That may be your purpose, and that's fine. I just see that as being a difficult. I don't necessarily think that that's a something that's a common purpose. I think, at least for me, and I know for you guys is if we know we're, we're helping a cause mm-hmm. and we're directly affecting and helping that cause, I think it'll make us so much better at even at what we do because it's bigger than us. You know what yeah. I mean? It's bigger than, than Mind Pump. It's bigger than Maps. It has to do with something that we believe in. And this is definitely a direction. Yeah, I wanted to make want to go. Uh, an impact that makes sense, you know, with what you know we're doing as a business as well. So it, it aligns nicely with you know our message and with uh, what what we could like tangibly see helping people versus us just finding any random no, you know, I, charity and then just banking on the fact that hey we're good people and like you know like honestly, I can't stand that. So I can't either. I think that I'm really happy the way we've done this and the order we've done it and the fact that we're having conversations around this is the fact that it won't be a quick decision. It's something that we've thought long and hard about and we want to do it right and like you said Justin that it should line with our message and what we're doing. And I think what's happening, and Sal made a point that I think nowadays in business you almost have to. And because of that, what I'm seeing people do is they try and use that as the as your their selling point. Yes. And like that to me is not it's, what is gross. Right, it is gross to me. And and you know Tom's kind of paved the way I think for a lot of people. At least for me, I don't remember who was really doing it before Tom's was. But I think even they are struggling now. I don't know if you guys have read stuff on Tom's. Mm-hmm. But well, they don't have a good product. They don't have a good product. Yeah. Their shoes suck. And they, but they, what they were a good example of is if you if you are doing some great work or you have a great message or you're giving back and, and you have, you're a good cause, you could literally build a brand off of that. Mm-hmm. And because of that, I see a lot of people 
doing that, but I think they're doing it with the wrong intention. Like, I right. think we started- We don't even have a product yet. Right. Like, a lot of times you'll see, like, this, like, very, you know, great intentions going into the business, but the business end of it hasn't even been well thought out yet. To where, right. Yeah, it's like they want to gather all this money and for this cause, and but, you know- It's all hype, dude. It's yeah. all hype. If you're, you know, and- not to knock somebody who started their business off this way if with good intentions. You know, I'm not talking about everybody. I know it's an overgeneralization when I talk like this, but... No, it's a bad business plan. It is a yeah, bad yeah. business plan. And and let's be honest, we're going to be able to provide way more help by doing it this way. By Yeah, how way- can you help anybody if you fail? Yeah, and uh, and, you know and, and how are you really helping anybody yeah, if you're sure. if you don't have a good product or you don't have anything else and you're purely just trying mm-hmm. to, you know, leverage the me giving back as a way to build your business... How much are you really helping? And people might think, oh, that's so cool. He gives all of his money over to whatever cause. And it's like, well, yeah, all of his money is only $100 a month. That's all he's making. Or would it be more impactful for us to take the time to actually build a legitimate, successful business that's going to be here Mm -hmm. for years and years and years and then take our time to court a bunch of different and do our homework because there's a lot of these these businesses that are doing things uh, that aren't helping. They think they're helping, but they're not. I mean, how many times we were just talking about right. this with Brian like was they ruin economies. Right. Like, Oh shit. Like I didn't see that happening. Right. Like, it, like no, just, you gotta be, I want to be smart. I want to be really smart with what we do. I want to really help people, not just in the short term. I want to help people in the long term. And I don't, I don't want to go and ruin economies, which has happened so many fucking times. A good example is uh, Haiti during that whole situation where they needed lots of help. We went in and dumped, you know, mil- hundreds of thousands or millions of pounds of rice to feed the people, and in the meantime, destroyed their their economy for rice. And so we killed all the businesses there, and now they have nothing to continue. So they run out of now. They eat all the rice that they got for free or whatever mm-hmm. from charity, and now they're fucked and they're in a bad situation. That was poor thinking and planning. So I want to help people in a very real way. But at the end of the day, look, the bottom line is this: like, if 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 we're growing and we're successful. You know, nothing will drive, I can only, I can speak personally, I I know you guys feel the same way, nothing drives me to work harder and do more than knowing that there's people that I'm really helping. Part of that is through the podcast, when we go and do these live events, you know, I I get so humbled because I hear firsthand from people how our fitness advice or whatever is helping them, and it makes me feel like, oh fuck, this is definitely bigger than just the business, like we're really helping people with eating disorders, we're helping people with the relationships to exercise and food and make the right decisions. And that feels really, really good and it gives, gives us a sense of purpose. And I think, look, you know, as the, as the business grows, as it makes money, as we become very successful monetarily, it'll feel really good to know that we can help with some of that money in other ways, not just through the market, which is also a great way to do it, but also through philanthropy. And um, I don't know. Right. Hope- isn't that, that right there, that point you just kind of went, went over is, a, is such a good one that – you could argue that someone running a very, very successful business is doing more good for the the economy and for others than somebody who starts off with the idea of these intentions if to you, give back if you but have, never really grows a business. If you have a business and and it's it's total market, total free market, and what I mean by that is you didn't get you're not getting subsidies from the government, you're not, you know, no laws are saying you have to exist. You literally exist because society is buying your shit and supporting you, you are making people's lives better. Now, there's no, you can't pass judgment on whether or not, you know, you think it's better or not. Like, I can't look at Twinkie company and say, well, they're not really making other people, because maybe they are. People want to buy their Twinkies and whatever. And I, I, I know the health implications, but people are making that decision for themselves. So, you know, if you do have a successful business, you are... In many ways, right. making people I don't feel see better. A lot and of helping frowns them. when you're eating a Twinkie. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> but it's a really good point, Justin. But no, exist. we're definitely going this way. We're just weighing can out our options. Can you still buy Twinkies? I think, I think somebody, think somebody, can. yeah, bought the brand. Can resurrected we, Hostess. Can we? Can we? Can we? Can we have a Twinkie when we go on this trip? No, dude. Why, dude? <laughs> Why? Oh, gonna, they're not good. <laughs> you can have whatever you oh, want. Oh, I disagree with yeah. that. Uh, can we at least have a taste test? Hey, Justin. We'll see if we can find. What do you think, Justin? Yeah, we'll see. What do you think, Justin? Of course I'm. Yeah. <laughs> That's my trying, boy. Trying to just, just trying to pin me just, down. Just, Doug, are you down? Whatever you say, Adam. So. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, Doug. It's not gonna turn into one. I'll of those eat a things. bite. That a boy. Uh, You're gonna be the only one who doesn't have a Twinkie. Have a Twinkie? 
I don't care. You know what's crazy? Watch how happy we're going to be, and you're yeah. going to just be over there like sul- I'll, I'll sulking. Wait, I'll wait till you, you guys wait are, for the next your day. Little pity party. I'll wait till you, you guys are I'm till you guys are shit. Then I'm going to then I'm going to be gloating. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm going to bring the the, the wipes. Well, we you have guys to, need extra wipes. We got to be careful. We can't have a box of Twinkies. No, we can have no, a no. Twinkie. One. I'm saying, I think one, I, you know what? Though? Just one. Here's the thing. I, I never remember. Liked them. I re- oh, you didn't? No, I never oh, liked as a them. Kid, I loved them. No, no, no. You know what I liked? Oh, I like. What, what them, are they though. called? They're the. They look like a cupcake, but they have the hard custard on the top. Uh, oh, ho ho. It it kind of looks like, like that. one of those little Debbie things. Or oh, the ding dongs. Is it oh, a ding dong? God, you're like the expert on these. Bro, I was, <laughs> I was, I was a ding dong. Candy and a sweet eater, yeah. man. Yeah. I tell you what. He's all ding dong 45. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the one from 1986 yeah, yeah. or the yeah. one where they changed yeah, yeah. the recipe. <laughs> the swirlers. And yeah. the- <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. No, they were the yellow ones. And they had the, the yellow custard on the top that was kind of hard. And then the squiggly line down it. Oh, zingers. Zinger. Yeah. Yet, <laughs> Justin does it too. I like uh, those. It's my inner fat kid. I actually, out. I actually did a bulk once, and I utilized zingers. Wow. Yes, I because eat those. because I'm like, I just need calories, yeah, and so yeah. I would eat a massive bowl of cereal milk. I'd eat five scrambled eggs with cheese, and then on the way to work, oh I'd eat four zingers. You know that what reminds I, me? I used to eat those like shitty pies at like Seven Eleven to home like, run pie. Yeah, yeah. Those exactly. are you know what's you know what's those interesting are to so me gross. are the things like that. All of those that we just literally named, right? Because they were all things that I ate as a kid. It reminds me of what happened to me when I was, I mean, as a trainer, right away, as soon as I was in the gym life. So by 20, right away, I was eating protein bars all the time, yeah. almost every day for years and years and years and it was always finding which one you like best and oh these ones are amazing which one had the highest protein right right that was my Chase, ch- chasing that stuff and I, quest has got such a great protein bar right well it wasn't until we started mind pump that i like cut protein bars out of my diet and i remember i did a show where i was like i'm not gonna do any protein powder or any any bars and see if i can notice a difference in my body i'm gonna do all whole foods and i did i remember telling sharing that on the show the thing that i was most fascinated with though is protein bars that I loved and thought were delicious when I went back and tried them again, tasted awful. And they, they tasted awful that I, to the point where I thought, oh, I must have got a bad bar, so let me eat a second one. And then I'd eat a second one, I'd be like, oh, that doesn't taste I, so good. I bet by the third and fourth one, By about good. the fourth or fifth bar in a row, wow. I could- Start I could condition you it back started into it. And then by the bar seven, eight, nine, it's like, oh, these are so good again. And it's yeah. like, I did that a couple times where I- Intentionally took it away for a long enough, like a good period of time, then came back to kind of test that. That's why I you know, so fascinating that, to me. So here's what's going to happen. I'll predict yep. this right now. You're going to eat the Twinkie. Yeah, you're going to have a piece yeah. of it, and you're going to be like, "Ooh, I don't want anymore." Okay, that's and enough. then we'll make ourselves yeah. eat it. It's yeah, too you're, much. Yeah, it's too sweet. Like I don't yeah. want anymore. That's how I am. Now, that's yeah. what's going to happen. The only way you can get away with it Lame. is if you have a glass of full fat whole milk with it. That'll help offset the. <laughs> is that, is yeah. that the strategy? Oh yeah, because it offsets the I'm gonna sweet. I'm going to apply that. The, yeah. Or you put butter on it, Justin. Okay. Oh, now we're talking <laughs> butter tweaking. <laughs> and then shove some bacon That's in it. there. So okay. listen, uh, we give out a lot of free guides and information. Free. You don't have to buy them. Free. Yeah. If you go to where's the what is the site for Mind the free stuff? Mind Pump Free. It's Can't, so easy. It doesn't my, get any easier. Mindpumpfree.com. Get uh, free guides on like how to work on your arms, your abs. How to do the right hit workout. Um, there's a couple other ones. Anyway, they're really, really good. They're well written. They have, uh, <laughs> if I don't say so myself, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. come with really good Big information, sample here. workouts. It's all free. Just go to mindpumpfree.com and uh, get those guides. Also, find us on Instagram. Uh, we have some surprises on there uh, that you might want to go check, take a look at. My page is Mind Pump Sal. Justin is Mind Pump Justin, and Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.